Welcome! How can you find the determinant of a matrix in an efficient way? That is the question I want to tackle in this video. I've rolled up my sleeves. I hope you've done the same. At least mentally. So far, the only instrument we have is the definition. If we want to find the determinant of, say, a 5x5 matrix A, like the one on the slide, and we just keep expanding across the first row, we will end up with a lot of calculations. After the first step, we find five 4x4 determinants, already too much to put on one slide. Applying the same procedure to these 4x4 determinants, we would get 5 times 4 equals 20 3x3 determinants, etc. This is quite a lot of work. And if the size of the matrix gets larger, say 10 by 10, the total number of products will grow completely out of control. For the given matrix A, we could have done smarter by choosing a better row to expand. I guess you can see which is the best choice. It is the fourth row, of course, since that row contains the maximum number of zeros. After expanding across this row, we have only one 4x4 determinant to compute instead of 5. Namely, the other four are multiplied by zeros. So the best deal is to look for a row or a column with a maximum number of zeros and expand across this row or column. In this video, I will explain how you can wiggle zeros into a determinant using row operations. One by one, I will explain the effects of row operations on the determinant of a matrix. The easiest row operation is scaling. That is, multiplying a row by a number c. It is quickly seen that this scales the determinant with a factor c as well. On the slide, this is written out for a 2x2 two two matrix. There you see that if you scale one row with a constant c, the determinant also changes with a factor c. For a general matrix, the rule is proved by expanding across the row with the scaling factor c, which is illustrated on the slide for the case of a 3x3 three three matrix. Here the second row has a scaling factor c. If you expand across the second row, in two steps you see that the scaling factor c can be taken to the front. So the total effect is a factor c to the determinant. The second row operation is swapping two rows. The effect on the determinant is that it gets an additional minus sign. Again, the slide shows the rule for a 2x2 two two matrix. If you swap the rows and find the determinants, you quickly observe that indeed the second determinant is minus 1 times the first. In general, it can be shown that swapping any two rows in an n by n determinant gives an additional minus sign so the net result is a change of sign of the determinant. The third row operation is the most important rule in the hunt for zeros, adding a multiple of one row to another row. When solving a linear system, this already was the most important row operation when we wanted to reduce the augmented matrix to echelon form. Have a look at the 2x2 two two example on the slide. Add the multiple k of the first row to the second row and find the determinant of the new matrix. As you see, there are two terms that cancel. You see, don't you? And if you delete these terms, you find that the second determinant is equal to the first. Again, without general proof, I tell you that there is a general rule here. Adding a multiple of a row to another row doesn't change the value of a determinant. So what have we found? First, row scaling with a factor c gives a factor c to the determinant. Second, swapping two rows leads to a change of sign of the determinant. And third and last, adding a multiple of one row to another row leaves the determinant invariant. Remember, I promised I would give an efficient way to compute the value of a determinant. Let me show you how these three rules can indeed be of help. Take the example on the slide. 
using the first row, we can create zeros in the first column. Namely, add the first row to the second row, add the first row three times to the third row, and so on, as indicated on the slide. This doesn't alter the value of the determinant. Namely, that's what rule 3 says. So let's see what happens. We get a determinant with four zeros in the first column. The next step to find the determinant is, of course, expand across this first column. This leaves us with only one 4x4 determinant. These two steps can be repeated. I mean, first create zeros in the first column by row reduction, next expand across the first column. Every time you do this, row reduction followed by column expansion, the size gets smaller, and finally you end up with just one 2x2 determinant. Of course, you can choose any column in which you want to create zeros. In this example, I have chosen a matrix for which the route from top left to bottom right works out smoothly. I strongly recommend you to do the full computation. You definitely need pen and paper for this. And don't forget to bring your answer to class. Some teachers may install it as a password to get into the classroom. Goodbye and see you in class.